beautiful soul welcome to my channel my name is Joanna if this is your first time watching my um, transmission I guess I would say my channeling welcome I hope you stay I hope you find uh, something useful out of this uh, channeling my ultimate goal is to help you understand yourself so that you can take the dare I say, responsibility for creating your own happiness. And yes, I did say the word responsibility because uh, we are all responsible for our happiness and our unhappiness, as harsh as it may sound. And um, ultimately, at the end of the day, my goal is to help you realize your own potential. And that will never happen unless we acknowledge and realize that we are fully responsible for living up to our potential. And yes, I know there will be many objections to that statement, but as this transmission goes on, I feel like I will be able to explain what I mean a little bit, a little bit more. The idea being, if you are wanting to feel more empowered, if you are wanting to create a more expanded version of yourself, if you are wanting to experience life beyond your current limited circumstances, then I hope you stay. I hope you find this information useful and that ultimately you will put this inf information into practice because at the end of the day, that is ultimately what ends up creating our experience or the difference in our experiences. So I do hope you stay. I would love for you to click subscribe or like or both if you so choose. It uh, helps to tell people that there is some worthwhile information here on this channel. And maybe share it with a friend or two who you believe would be uh, benefiting from this information. Uh, my intention is to be as clear of a channel as possible. Uh, so uh, that is what I have for you as far as my intention. If you are coming back, uh, thank you for being um, a loyal subscriber and a loyal supporter. It helps me do what I do. Without you, there would be no need for me to do this. I would be talking to an empty screen. Well. I will be talking to those who are not listening. And if you're not listening, then you're not going to get the value from what I channel and therefore you will not benefit from it. So um, thank you for having the courage to stay because many times the information that I channel provokes um, internal conflict and it provokes, provokes internal triggers and ultimately at the end of the day my job if you will is to um, challenge the status quo it's to challenge what is in order to help us expand to something more than what is. And of course, if you are ultimately feeling absolutely happy and content, then absolutely stay, stay in that space. But chances are, if you are watching this channel, if you are drawn to this type of material, that there is at least a part of you, consciously or otherwise, that is seeking to experience something more. So, if this is you, and if you are watching this, it is you. Uh, that is what I hope you get from this. Um, couple of announcements. We just had the lunar, uh, not lunar, solar eclipse on, I almost said January, 
December 3rd and 4th. I'm recording this on December 4th. And um, very powerful energy. Eclipses are all about eclipsing things out of our lives. We've talked about this before. It's also a full moon, which represents new beginnings. So it's a double whammy. It is eclipsing things out of our life and also introducing something new. So this is a very powerful time for any sort of rituals that will help you experience more of what you want by letting go of what you no longer need. And um, that is never really an easy thing to do because our egos, who ego is based on attachments, uh, to let go means to detach, to, um, well, to let go of. And it's not an easy thing. And the type of letting go I'm talking about is the type of letting go that ultimately affords us the ability to experience something more in our lives, to experience a greater ver version of ourselves and hence a greater level of satisfaction from life in general. And though most people want to experience that, many are not willing to do what is necessary in order to let go of what is limiting in order to experience something more. And it is often when we experience a lot of resistance. So uh, I've talked about resistance on many occasions. I coined the term resistinitis. And it seems to come up when something big is just around the corner. And there are many shifts happening right now, as I'm sure you know already. I mean, we had the November 19th eclipse, December 4th eclipse. We have a new moon and there's a full moon. Um, I just had a, an intuitive astrologer do a webinar with me on these energies in particular, including what's coming up for 22 for each sign, if that is something that you are interested in. There's a link down below and you can, um, you can uh, purchase it to see how this is going to affect your individual sign. On December 28th, I am bringing in a specialist who is um, um, an expert in detoxifying the physical body in order to bring us into a healthy state of being on a physical level as well as on an emotional level. And it is uh, healing the body and the soul using nature's remedies, which is food. So New Year's is coming up or yeah, New Year is coming up. 2022 is just around the corner. Uh, many people tend to want to make radical, drastic, big changes when it comes to their physical health bodies and mental health, which is all part of it. And um, if you are interested in learning how you can bring back more health into your life, how to let go of this ease in your body and um, well, ultimately experience a healthier life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise, then um, I feel this would greatly uh, benefit you. I know I'm looking forward to having this webinar. It's very exciting. And um, so the link is down below. I believe that there is um, a promo until, um, I believe the 21st of December. So you'll save a little bit of money. If you are interested in taking care of your life, taking responsibility for your health. Uh, if, you are, if you are brave enough to do so, then um, I would love to have you. Also, last but not least, um, there has been a lot of scamming going around pretending to be Joanna the healer, Joanna the medium. Um, following people, especially on Instagram, 
saying that they're Joanna and uh, if offering offering you um, a reading I will never I never have and I never do ask you or attempt to ask you if you want a reading from me first and foremost I don't do readings that is not how I work and um, anyone who wants to have a session with me and my team who wants help through channeling knows how to get a hold of me the information is readily available everything is professional with professional email address etc so please don't be scammed please don't be tempted to have a reading with somebody who says hey i'm joanna i'd like to do you want to have a reading with me it's a hundred dollars or whatever it is that they say it is a scam okay and um please protect yourself the best i can do is bring your attention to it so that you are don't fall prey into these type of individuals and um, like i said i will never contact you for a reading that is not how i work um so that's uh last but not least all right so let's move on with today's transmission i was in a meditation just before i turned on the camera after doing breath work and um I've, I've realized just how much the ego, my ego, is um, fighting to stay in control. It is relentless. And I was able to get myself in the space where I was actually able to see it because most of the time I am smack in it, therefore I'm not able to see it. And when we are most of us are in a waking state, in our 3D state. We're not able to see just how much our ego is trying to control everything that is, um, including trying to control our control uh, us out of happiness. Now, why would the ego want to control us out of happiness? Well. If happiness, if experience happiness, experiencing happiness means we need to let go of something, the ego does not like to let go of attachments. So if you have identified yourself in a certain way and that certain way is blocking your happiness, your ego will resist letting that go. It is part of your identity. It is part of how you identify yourself as a human being. So anyway, I was fascinated how much the ego is fighting trying to stay in control and at the same time I realized that the more I manage to relax that part of me the more I have access to much greater information much more higher frequency awareness that can actually allow me to be a higher vibrating happier person but it rarely happens through when the ego has control of the situation so i feel i need the need to say that some of you need to hear this and by the way there is not an ounce of me that's saying that ego is bad quite on the contrary ego is beautiful it is what allows us to have this human experience as an individual i but the ego is also very limited in the in, in a very uh, way it is structured. It is structured through limitations. It is structured uh, in a way that is limited. We are unlimited beings having a limited experience in a physical body with limited awareness. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that, but we do have access to more. We have access to what is beyond our conscious or unconscious limitations. And in order for that to happen, we have to be willing to, to some degree, to some extent, 
let go of our ego or let go of our ego trying to be so in control. So that's the first part I want to share with you. The other part that came up as far as conversation is how the idea of victimization is coming to mind. It has been very much in my face lately, uh, experiencing, um, seeing, observing a lot of people being in their own victim state. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. When we are in a victim state, we are under the assumption that life happens to us instead of us making life happen. It does not mean that we have not been victimized at some point. It doesn't mean that every single one of us has experienced being victim of something on some level to some degree. I don't mean that. It's a very valid experience. What I'm talking about is staying in a victimization state of mind where, for example, we blame other people for our unhappiness or we rely on other people for our happiness. And for some reason, it's been, it's been very prevalent in my face. And when I asked the question, why am I seeing this? It is to show me that every single human has the ability to be happy or unhappy. And everyone's happiness or unhappiness and the level of happiness or unhappiness is 100% under their control. Unfortunately, when we are in a victimization state, we don't see it or we don't believe it and therefore we don't exercise our rights to it. And we end up blaming other people or other situations or the world. And this isn't to say that it's wrong or bad. It, I, I, I try very hard when I'm in that channeling mode to not use the words wrong or bad because there, when we are in higher dimensional frequency, the idea of good or bad doesn't exist. The good idea of good or bad is very much 3D ego oriented. But so it's not good or bad. It's only does it serve us? Does it give us what we ulti ultimately what we want? Does it allow us to be more where, e where we are in a blame state? If you were born into a family, for example, like I have, where victimization was a thing, in other words, the victim mentality was very prevalent and the idea was that my happiness or unhappiness was somebody else's fault. We fall into that structure of being without even knowing that that's what we're doing. And this is where the, may I say, danger is. And that's because the danger is that we are unconsciously creating our reality. And we create our reality every moment of every day with every breath we take. We either do it consciously or we do it unconsciously. Most of the time, uh, I would say as far as 90% of the time, and this has been widely documented, it is said that between 90 and 95% of the time, we are living life unconsciously. Now think about that for a moment. Let's take the larger aspect of 90%. 90% of everything you do, say, feel and behave is unconscious, which means you are not making conscious choices or decisions how you live your life. You are basically relying on what has been and on the 
habits, if you will, that you have uh, had with you for a very long time. Therefore, if we are trying to create something different, but we are unconsciously creating it with our habits that are not allowing us to ex experience something different, then it's a bit of a catch-22. How can you experience something different when you are constantly doing the same thing over and over? So this is what I want to ask. And I know this video may be a little bit controversial. It may rub people the wrong way. But at the end of the day, my job, if you will, is to trigger or uproot the status quo. What are you victim to? Are you a victim to your circumstances? If so, why? Why are you a victim to your circumstances? And I know, I know, I know because I'm a human too. The ego is going to come up with 10,000 different reasons why it is somebody else's fault. That's what the ego does. That's what the ego does. It's very normal. There's nothing wrong with it. It is what it is. However, at the end of the day, if that's what we do, and if we believe that it is somebody else's fault, then we have no hope in hell. Each and every individual has the ability to choose and decide how they want to experience any situation. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand me. If somebody is being robbed, for example, I am not saying that you should sit there and go, oh, I am very happy that I am being robbed. I'm not, of course, I'm not saying that. That would be stupid of me and ignorant. I don't believe I'm an ignorant person. Well, at least I try not to be, and I certainly don't think I'm a stupid person. I try not to be. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if you have been robbed and you felt a certain way for very valid reasons, that's very normal, that's very understandable, and it's very appropriate. But how long will you stay there? How long will you be in that state of mind? Because being in that state of mind or in that consciousness is going to affect you. Um, I don't know why I said that the idea of robbed. It's just an example that came to me. But it's basically asking the question, have you been wronged? The answer is yes. Of course, we have been wronged. All of us have been wronged in some way. Have you been wronged? The answer is yes. Are you still in that state of mind of being wronged. In other words, if you've been wronged 20 years ago, if you've been hurt 20 years ago, if you've been taken advantage of 20 years ago, and you felt the way you did 20 years ago, do you still feel the same way now? Because if you still feel the same way now, then that means that has not been healed. And that old wound is making you stay in the victimization mode, which is affecting everything you do. And you will rob yourself of a happier life, a more expanded life, a more abundant life. Why? Because you will hold yourself back. You will not allow yourself to take ch chances, to take risks, to step out of your comfort zone because you will be afraid, okay? Now, we don't often think about these things on a conscious level. It's something we do on the on unconscious and that's because the ego start, tries to protect ourselves. But if the ego is always trying to protect ourselves, then that means that the ego is expecting something to happen. And I believe I said this before, more than once. If you're expecting something to happen, then chances are you are nine times out of 10 are going to 
live up to that expectation in some way, shape or form. So you may not be robbed again, for example, but you may end up uh, attracting situations to you that will make you feel like you were robbed, like you were taken advantage of. And that's the beauty of the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind remembers. And what it remembers as far as something negative, it has a tendency to try to avoid it in the future. So what is, and there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, you want to avoid things that are unpleasant. But when we put too much emphasis on that, or when we put ourselves in prisons in order to avoid, then we are consciously or otherwise limiting ourselves out of amazing experiences. Okay, so what is the antidote to that? The antidote to that is to heal whatever that was. So the question might be for you. Who do you blame for your choices of your unhappiness? Who do you hold accountable for your happiness? And whatever the answer is, whoever you call, hold accountable for your happiness or, unha or unhappiness, then that means that you are not living your life fully. That means that you are experiencing your life from a very limited perspective. And um, again, I can hear the ego jumping in and saying, no, 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 I have valid reasons. The ego will always find a hundred different reasons why it thinks someone is to blame or, 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 or somebody should, uh, somebody owes you something or that's what the ego does. Nothing wrong with that. Again, there's not, it's not about right or wrong. It's about, does it allow you be, to be a higher version of yourself? Does it allow you to be more of you, to experience more of life in pleasant, beautiful, joyful ways? Because if it isn't, then it's serving you in a very limited way. So the answer, the question you might want to ask yourself, are you okay with that? If the answer is yes, then that's absolutely beautiful and wonderful. And please keep doing what you're doing. There is no wrong or right with that. But chances are you wouldn't be listening to this type of material because there is some underlying force within you that wants to experience something more. And I would go as far as saying that there is a willingness on some level to do what's necessary in order to do something more. And that willingness may be coming from your soul. And it has to, I almost want to say, um, maybe fight with the ego to get the ego out of the way. And remember, the ego is always trying to protect you. It's, try, it try, it's trying to protect you from something that has generally happened in the past. So the ego generally lives in the past. It takes its cues and its data from past experiences. It doesn't, it doesn't compare to the future, it compares to the past. So it's always living in the past. So we are under very powerful energetic influences right now. Which means that our ability to shed our own skin, our old skin, to heal our old experiences that are keeping us in, for example, victim mode, victim consciousness, that are keeping us in a blame space, that are keeping us in limited understanding of who we are and therefore what we can experience is, or what we can experience. Um, we have an opportunity to release all of that, but it first requires awareness, acknowledgement, and 
the ability to make a different choice. And as I say all this, I hope it's coming across that I am saying it for the purpose of helping you be more <clears throat> rather than saying you're a victim or you're in a victim mode because that is, I come from that. As a matter of fact, the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I come from complete victimization. I, for, the, for most of my life, up until very recently, was very much a victim to my circumstances. I blamed the world. I blamed other people for my unhappiness. And I blamed other people for me being stuck. 100%. 100%. I'm an expert at that. I wrote the thesis, if you will. I probably could have had a PhD on victimization. I have a very close family member who is in that state to this day. And they cannot see their way out of it. It's become their identity and it is um, their comfort zone. And it's hard to let, let go of comfort zones. It is. So I'm not saying this from a space of blame, I'm quite on the contrary. I am saying this from a space of compassion because I understand. I understand what it's like to be in a space where you blame other people for your unhappiness. I understand what it's like to be in a space where you depend on others for your happiness. I know what that's like, 110%. So I hope that you can feel where this is coming from for me because it's coming from a space of compassion. Why? Because my, hmm, I ultimately want you to experience something more. I want you to experience all of that life has to offer beyond your current circumstances. But we will never be, a, we, myself included, we will never be able to do that unless we take a look at what is, unless we recognize how we contribute to where we are right now, unless we take full responsibility of that within ourselves, and of course the world contributes. But like I said, every single human has the choice and the ability to choose and decide how they're going to experience life's experiences. Every person has that choice. We just tend to fall back into our habits and what we think we should or shouldn't do, but we all have the ability to choose. Now, I'm not saying, again, if you've been wrong, you should be happy. I'm not saying that. Again, that would be stupid of me and ignorant. I'm not an ignorant person. I try not to be. All I'm saying is, if somebody has wronged you, get mad, get angry, but then move on from it. Don't let it keep you in the past. Because if you do, then all you're going to do is you're going to keep recreating your past. That's just the way it is. So, where in life are you stuck believing that it's somebody else's fault why you're here? And this is not about saying you're to blame. This is about recognizing the ultimate truth. If you are in a certain situation, then there is some part of you that is agreeing to this on some level. Um, even if somebody says to me, well, I'm forced going to work, chances are no, you're not really being forced. You do it, you don't wanna do it, so you say you're forced, but probably no one is holding you by the arm and dragging you to go to work. Now, that's just an example. Um, you are doing it 
on some level, willingly. And that's the harsh truth. And again, this is not about saying you're to blame. No, this is about recognizing that in each and every moment, we have a choice. And we can sometimes choose, and we do, choose to do the things we don't like, but at least admitting that it is our choice takes us away from being a victim. It says, I am making this choice even though I don't like it because, the, because I know that at least if I make this choice, I get this in return because we always get something in return. Now, the mind doesn't always think of it that way. Uh, almost always the mind doesn't think of it that way. So I would invite you just to look at your life, especially in the places, in your circumstances where you are not happy. For example, if I am frustrated with my work, then I have to ask myself some pretty serious questions. What's the frustration and what am I willing to do about it in order to not be frustrated? I can't say, well, this person or this person is making me frustrated. Well, if that's the case, release the person or release how you're doing this with this person. I have to take responsibility for that, right? Um, for some reason, the month of May is coming up and it seems like the month, I don't know, I don't know why May, I don't, I'm not an astrologer, but it feels like in the month of May, a lot of what I'm talking about right now, especially when it comes to the victimization stuff, stuff is going to, we're going to have a lot of clarity. Um, things are going to become much more clear. So if you, if you are feeling um, stuck in some way and you feel like you're the victim, if you will, if you will, it feels like in the month of May, there is a potential for a lot of clarity and therefore release. So perhaps some of you listening to this will finally be able to recognize how you can release yourself from where you are. Perhaps you haven't been able to see it. Perhaps you're unwilling to see it and that's okay. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Perhaps you're not ready to see it. Also, that's perfectly okay. But it seems like in the month of May, May, June, somewhere there, which is, uh, well, which is spring, uh, it marks spring, close to summer. Uh, there seems to be a lot of clarity and it seems to come up around um, either a full moon or a new moon. So full moons and new moons obviously are energetically very potent. Um, and what I'm getting is um, baggage. And let me just pull up. I want to see here uh, in the month of May, May 20. Okay, new moon. Okay, new full moon. <clears throat> um, oh, so in um, full moon, full moon. So we okay. So perfect. So we have a so oh interesting super full moon is on May 26th. It was interesting because I was seeing something around the 28th. So there's a full, super full moon on May 28th. Oh no, that's 2021. Let's see, 2022. Where's 2022? Uh, one second, one second. May 22 full moon. Um, okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but... Um, This is, it's, it's going to bug me if I don't. Um, new moon is on May 30th. Okay, so new moon in Gemini. May 30th, okay. There's a, and a full moon on May 18th or May 16th, looks like. Is that 2022? Yes. So, Full moon on 16th of May, 2022, 
which is uh, in Sagittarius, and uh, new moon on May 30th uh, in a Gemini. Uh, for, some re for some reason, those two timelines seem to be very pertinent to what I was talking about regarding the, uh, uh, especially the, the, the specifically the victimization state of mind. Again, I'm not talking from a space of blame. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm talking, I, I'm, I'm talking from a space of encouraging us to move away from that. Um, when I observe the person who I am close to, who is dealing with that, who is in that consciousness, it's very sad uh, because they can't see themselves in it they believe the world is to blame and they're fully married to that idea and what ends up happening is they give all their power away which is very sad and the sad part is that a person has to be ready to see it you have to be ready to see it if you're not ready to see it, um, people can tell you, people can show you, things can happen. Your ego is just going to say, no, not interested. Because that's where the ego feels safe. It's, it, it is, it's home, if you will. And to see it is, in a way, giving up its home. And uh, that is very uncomfortable. It is shock to the identity. It is uh, shock to the ego, which is identity. And it is often, um, structurally speaking, life-changing. What does that mean? It means that when we are finally able to see it, we then have the choice to change it by the way in which we do things, how we behave, what we say, what we don't say, how we act, how we don't act. And that has the potential to start dismantling the old so that the new come in. And that is usually an uncomfortable process at first. And it is also the mark of a new beginning to identity change or on some level, some level ego death. So for many of you listening to this, if I'm saying things and you're like, I don't know what this lady is talking about, I have no freaking clue. Uh, bear in mind that what I talk about often is information from the future and it makes no sense right now. And oftentimes it doesn't make sense to me, but then the time arrives and it's like, oh my God, I know exactly what that means now. Okay. Um, Here's what I would encourage you. If you find yourself stuck and uh, maybe unwilling to look at how you are contributing to your stuckness, I would encourage you to say, okay, universe, I may not be seeing my part in my stuckness, but I'm ready to see it and therefore to let it go. If in fact, you want to experience something more, something greater and something different. Because if you don't, just keep doing what you're doing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's perfect, it's absolutely wonderful. It's your choice, it's your free will. Nothing and no one is gonna blame you for that. But you will be left with recreating the same thing over and over again, just in a different package with a different person with the different circumstances on a different day. Okay. All right. So time for individual messages. So the idea here is to give you a message of what do you need to know in order to experience more happiness in your life? I'm going to pick three uh, messages or three cards each one representing a different message. So the key to your first 
uh, message. <clears throat> mm. Okay. We have uh, spiritual strength in reverse, and we have conflict and despair. So the first thing I want to say is here, no more giving up. Stop giving up. You give up on yourself far too easily. You believe in the idea that you can't. And as long as you believe that you can't, you won't. So the idea here is to recognize that yes, you can. You just have to be willing to try doing something different. Now, some of you listening to this may be very stubbornly <clears throat> um, um, married to the idea that uh, it's somebody else's fault. Well, again, that just keeps you stuck. What role do you play in your circumstances? Good or bad or indifferent? What role do you play? Ask yourself. If you are struggling with something, what role do you play in it? How do you contribute to it? And if you, the answer is you don't, unfortunately, that's not the case because you do. It may be unconscious and it probably is unconscious, but you do, we all do. And again, this isn't blame. This is with the hopes of helping you recognize that you are a fucking powerful, excuse my French, I just said that, powerful being. And you are a big, time co-creator of everything that you experience like it or not now imagine now all of a sudden being a conscious creator and consciously experiencing your life differently that would that would give you opportunities to experience more of yourself but you first have to have the willingness to recognize how you contribute to where you are right now so if you are drawn to pile number one, one of the biggest things that I can share with you is to look at your inner conflict. The part of you that believes it can't. I can't be more, I don't deserve more. I can't attract more, I can't contribute more. Uh, I can't do this, I can't allow myself to. Whatever you feel you can't, And of course, I'm not saying, if you say I can't fly, I'm saying, well, you can. Well, I'm not talking about these things, obviously. I'm talking about, you know, reasonable things. If you say I can't make more money, for example, or I can't find a better person, or I can't have better health, or I can't try this, I would encourage you to ask the question, what belief system in you tells you that? Where does it come from? And is it really true? Or is it only temporarily your truth right now? Because there's a difference. The higher truth is very different oftentimes than what our current truth is at an, in any moment. But truth can change. It can change based on what you choose or what you decide, okay? So if you often say to yourself, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, perhaps acknowledge first that it's not that you can't, but maybe that you're not willing to try and therefore you won't. Now, if you won't, which is fine, you don't have to, but at least it's then your choice. That's empowering. If you say, I won't, that's you saying, no, I won't. If you say, I can't, it's presuming that somehow there's this force that's preventing you from doing something or experiencing something. That's disempowering, okay? So instead of saying, I can't, perhaps ask yourself, maybe I could, maybe I could try, maybe I will try, okay? And that's a start. Message number two. 
Mm. So this is the hangman in traditional tarot deck. It's called Sacrifice here. It is a very strong energy and it's all about, well, stuckness or sacrifice. Um, where are you stuck right now? What are you sacrificing of yourself in order to be where you are right now and is it worth it? And if it is, fantastic, but this is coming up for a reason. This question is coming up for a reason. If you are stuck because you are somehow fulfilling some obligations, then look at the obligations and ask yourself, could I approach my obligations differently in a way that will allow me to also experience more of what I want rather than sacrificing my needs and my desires, okay? I know what I'm gonna say next is going to be met with a lot of resistance, but when there is a will, there is a way. I know that, I know that, I know that, it's true. Uh, it's not always easy nor comfortable, but when there is a way, there's there's a will, there's a way. There's a reason why this saying exists. So you might want to ask yourself, in a situation where you are feeling stuck, or you feel like you are sacrificing your own needs, or you're sacrificing your own happiness for somebody else's happiness, first ask yourself this question. Am I willing to admit that? To myself, am I willing to see it? Am I willing to admit that I am consciously choosing to be in the space out of my own willingness? Okay, so first, admit that to yourself, not as a blame, as a recognition of your power that you have a say in this. Once you recognize that, yes, that's the case, and that often can be very hard at first, because again, we want to blame. We want to blame. It's easier to say, no, this is, they're making me, he's making me, she's making me. I'm stuck because of this person. No, you are a participant. You are a participant. And again, it's not a blame. It's recognizing your power in this. Remember, my work is all about helping you recognize your power. So if you refuse, if you refuse to acknowledge your power in it, then you deem yourself powerless. That's your choice. That's your choice. And there's nothing anyone can do about that. N nothing, nothing. Because you are consciously, willingly accepting or not accepting your power in that. Okay? So once you see it, once you acknowledge your part in it, ask yourself, am I willing to do something about it? If the answer is no, again, no judgment, nothing wrong with that, but at least you are making a conscious choice. You are powerfully declaring, no, I choose to do nothing about it. You're in charge. You're in power of that. More power to you. But if the answer is yes, then ask yourself, what am I willing to do about it? What am I willing to change about me or the situation to bring me closer to what I want while I fulfill my duties, while I fulfill my responsibilities? There is a way, there is a way. There's always a way when there is willingness and when there is awareness, okay? Also, um, you're doing a really good job of keeping yourself small. Or, yeah, keeping yourself small. If you think of yourself as small, um, ask yourself, how is it serving you? 
And if you say it doesn't, again, it's not how it works. Of course it does. Everything we do serves us in some way. If you're keeping yourself small, if you are neglecting your needs, if you are um, refusing to look after your own needs, how is it serving you? Perhaps it's keeping you stuck so that you can constantly blame yourself or blame others for where you're at. Again, all I'm doing is I'm trying to help you acknowledge your power in this. Because by acknowledging your power, you take your power back. Okay. There is more for you in life than this. So whatever this is for you, there is more. But you have to be willing to acknowledge that there actually is more. Because if you don't, you're not going to reach for it. Okay? So if you are drawn to pile number two, one of the biggest things that I can say to you is stop keeping yourself small. And if you continue to choose to keep yourself small, at least ask yourself, acknowledge, how is it serving you? What is it giving you in return? When you keep yourself small, when you push yourself down, when you neglect yourself, what do you get from it? Again, if you say nothing, that's not how it works. You get something, otherwise you wouldn't do it. Perhaps it keeps you in a space that's so familiar that the very thought of leaving it or le leaving it behind and feeling something different is terrifying. Okay? Self-neglect is a real thing. So that's pile number two. Pile number three. What do you need to experience more happiness? Mm. Whew, boy. Another very powerful message. It's called the shadow. It's the moon. It's looking at our shadows, looking at the darker aspects of ourselves. I don't mean evil. That is not what I mean. Looking at the aspects of ourselves that are inconvenient, scary, um, things we tend to neglect. And there is an opportunity here to bring forth an enormous level of abundance by tapping into your own strength. But we're never going to be able to do that unless we first start to look at the aspects of ourselves we want to hide from. Why? Because those aspects of ourselves typically are the aspects that limit our strength, that limit our abilities, that limit our potential. The other card that popped up is the solar plexus, which is all about the ego. Okay. Um, when we have a very strong, balanced ego, we more or less live a fulfilling life. We are in charge of ourselves. We are in charge of our life. We are at peace with ourselves. We are not at conflict with ourselves. We like ourselves. We love ourselves. We take care of ourselves. We're at ease. We're at peace. Life flows. Yes, there's challenges, of course, but we approach challenges um, with a different frame of mind versus when our ego is not balanced. When our ego is not balanced, we can go from being shy, timid, very insecure, to being overly aggressive, belligerent, uh, controlling. Those are all aspects of an unbalanced ego. So if you are drawn to pile number three, 
chances are that you've experienced or have been experiencing some digestive problems because that is solar plexus is your abdomen. It is how you digest information. It is how you uh, store information in terms of emotions. You don't digest emotions, which means you don't express your emotions. You hold yourself back. You hold your power back. And um, that's all indicative of needing to do some shadow work. Okay. And, um, well, we talked about the ego at the very beginning. Ego, ego, ego wants to protect us. Ego wants to protect itself. The, the thing that ego fears the most is its, is its own death. Um, there's a third card that came up, which is this, this conflict and despair. Okay. So this is reflective of the mind. Um, for some of you, there is some underlying current of depression. And for some of you, you may have at some point felt uh, suicidal or you may feel that now. Um, that's because there is some unresolved inner conflict happening on the inside. Um, there is a part of you that wants to free itself, but it needs outside help. Okay. So if you're experiencing a lot of inner conflict, if you are experiencing desires to harm yourself consciously or otherwise, or if you are um, indulging in self-destructive behaviors, then those are all indicative of an in enormous internal turmoil going on. And the message I have for you is please ask someone for help. Someone who knows who they're, what they're doing. Someone who is not going to judge you. Someone who understands the power of working with the shadow self. Um, for some of you, this uh, is talking about plant medicine. I'm not gonna go into it too much. If this is for you, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, so there is an opportunity to heal your ego. Um, there's a lot of uh, self-destructive behavior going on and it could be anywhere anything from drinking to overeating to self-harm to uh you know addiction to um unhealthy relationships uh over shopping overeating i mean you name it you understand what self-destructive behavior is um but i get self-harm is i get self-harm so if you are experiencing this then um Ask yourself this question, do you feel deserving of help? If the answer is no, then that in itself is an indication that you've got some huge inner conflict going on. Because of course you deserve help. Of course you deserve help. You are a divine being for God's sake. Of course you deserve help. Uh, if the answer is yes, then what are you willing to do to seek it? And if you are willing to seek it, then literally say to the universe, universe, help me seek help. And then notice what the universe delivers to you. And I always say, be open to how it comes to you because generally the universe will deliver to you in a package that is somewhat different than what we think, but our thoughts are very limited but there's a huge inner conflict going on. So I'm, getting, I'm being reminded about the message about May of next year. If you're picking pile three, I have a feeling that by May of next year or around May of next year, a lot of your inner conflict, you will either have some light that's being shed on it or you will resolve this inner conflict, which tells me that you're going to set yourself free. And that, my dear soul, there's nothing more beautiful than that. So this is all for you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you would like 
help from me and my intergalactic team, my spirit team, I would be honored. If you would like to spend some time with me in the webinars that I mentioned at the very beginning, that note, that, that uh, link is down below and also the link for what's coming up for 2022. I wish you best of luck. Take care of yourself. And uh, I love your comments, by the way. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.